This is Jamie. She's 14 years old. She's a freshman in high school. And the next four years of her life will teach her how to write a five paragraph essay, how to drive her family's minivan, and how to shrug off sexist remarks from her supervisors and peers. It's a toss up regarding which of these skills she'll use more for the rest of her life. Based on my research findings, by the time she goes off to college, Jamie is likely to receive the message at least once or twice that women belong at home raising children. Peers, teachers, coaches, or staff at Jamie's high school are likely to criticize her at least once or twice for not behaving like a girl should. Sexually crude or offensive behavior is likely to be littered throughout Jamie's high school tenure, including offensive sexual jokes via email or text, unwanted attempts to draw Jamie into sexual discussions, and the distribution of sexual pictures or stories. Of all the ways that Jamie will encounter sexual harassment in high school, the most common is likely to be sexist remarks. Some of these remarks will be couched as jokes, some as insults. So how will these experiences affect Jamie? The more sexual harassment she encounters in high school, the more trauma-related symptoms she will experience as she enters college. Trauma-related symptoms include trouble sleeping, headaches, difficulty concentrating, sadness, loneliness. And when I looked at responses from over 500 undergrads, just like Jamie, I found that high school sexual harassment accounts for 15% of the variance in current trauma-related symptoms. 15%! Isn't high school bad enough already? But okay. Sexual harassment, predicting trauma symptoms, that's old news, right? Replicated many times over. But wait, there's more. I also asked students to report on their high school's response to harassment. Many students reported that their high school didn't do enough to prevent harassment, made it difficult to report harassment, or mishandled the cases that were reported. We call this institutional betrayal. And this betrayal predicted current trauma symptoms above and beyond gender plus sexual harassment. In other words, students who witnessed their high school's indifference to harassment are more likely to experience trauma-related symptoms, even if they were never harassed themselves. High school doesn't have to be this way. What would high school look like if students could count on gender equity and institutional courage? Heck, what would academia look like if we could count on gender equity and institutional courage?